welcome back. I'm Lucy and you're watching the next instalment in my backpacking series around Southeast Asia and Australia. This time we're documenting 10 amazing days spent in Malaysia. Our first destination was Georgetown, Penang and this is the Penang Peranakan Mansion. It was built in the 1890s and once was the residence of a 19th century Chinese tycoon. It's now a museum of Peranakan culture and we really enjoyed walking around and learning about these people. They were the first wave of settlers from southern China in Southeast Asia. We then had a wander around the old town. There's so much really cool street art here and loads of really interesting little shops. We spoke to a woman here in a halal chocolate shop, which was really interesting. And yeah, it was just great to observe the differences between Thai culture, which we'd been quite used to at this point, and Malaysian culture. Our next stop was the Keklok Si Temple, which is the largest Buddhist temple in Malaysia and an important pilgrimage site for Buddhists from Hong Kong, the Philippines, Singapore and other areas of Southeast Asia. Really enjoyed walking around here and it was very, very beautiful, really colourful, which I really like as well. And yeah, just kind of noticing subtle differences between Thai temples, Thai Buddhist temples and Malaysian Buddhist temples. There's definitely more of a Chinese influence here. So that was interesting to observe. And the view from the top of this temple was really, really gorgeous. Shall I compare to in the Cameron Highlands and it's a lovely lovely fresh morning. We're going to explore a tea plantation and strawberry fields today so yeah I'm pretty excited. It's the first morning where it feels like a British fresh morning. It's very very lovely. Um, yeah just nice fresh air. Nice. Oh, yeah. cool. It's such a mix of buildings and people and cuisines and styles. It's, Malaysia is such a fusion place, is what we've noticed so far. Downfall when the rain pours. 
Today we're heading to Kuala Lumpur, which we're all very excited about. Um, going to be cool and going to be a change of pace from the Cameron Highlands. But yeah, excited about it and just going to see what we get up to. If you're ever in the Cameron Highlands, I definitely recommend staying at Bricks. It's been really, really good, very clean, tidy and yeah, great location. We've had some of the best Indian food on our trip so far. So many nice restaurants. arrived in the most gorgeous hotel that we never stayed in the likes of again absolutely stunning and this was only 10 pounds a night each for the four of us to have this whole apartment and the views the location amazing it's insane and to top it all off this is the pool 10 pounds a night this is the pool insane <laughs> we lost our minds a bit I wish that I could show you how <laughs> list of places to visit in Kuala Lumpur was Batu Caves. This is Batu Caves and the steps leading up to them. They're also called the Tenth Caves because there are six of these important holy sites in India and four in Malaysia. Guesses on how many steps? Um, 250. Two caves. Really cool. I was closest with 270 steps, but now there's more steps, which means that Freya's gonna win, unfortunately. And then we were mesmerized by these water droplets for probably a good 15 minutes. That's quite cool. Yeah, I'm 
chút hơi ấm của anh But that's enough, you're out of mood, it's over arrived in Malacca off to find some lunch. <laughs> yeah, go on. Other of bodybuilders in Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> from Malacca. This is such a cute little town slash city. The area we're in feels very Portuguese, very European, I guess because of the colonial influence here. Um, but in general, there's such a mix of Chinese culture, Indian culture, and Malay culture in Malaysia. We learned more about it in the National Museum of Malaysia yesterday in Kuala Lumpur. Um, but it's such a cool country, like such a mix. And everyone just seems to be getting on quite well in general, so I really, really like that. It feels very peaceful. Um, but yeah, Malacca is a cool vibe. We've been wandering around the main streets and just taking it in. Currently in Dutch Square, I think it's called, or Red Square, which to me is reminding me of Bruges when I went there in 2019. And yeah, I'm very much enjoying. It's such a hard place to put your finger on, but very cool and excited to have a day and a half here in Malacca. I'll leave the music out here and just let you enjoy the sounds because this is something I like to do when I'm walking around a new place. Take out my music, take out a podcast, just listen. That way you can kind of get more of a sense of the place. So I'll let you do the same. Very, very Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> this is St. Paul's Church, originally Portuguese, and then was controlled by the Dutch and then the British, so lots of colonial history and out that sea is the Malacca Straits Having a lovely little time wandering around. This is such a pretty city. 
So this is displaying the three major ethnic groups in Malaysia. So you have the Malay in the centre, the Indian population on the right and the Chinese population on the left. I love how these are all considered Malaysian and they really work in harmony together. Our taxi driver was telling us about how religious practice is seen as a choice in Malaysia and everyone should have a choice in what they choose to believe in, which is such a great mindset to have, I think. I'm having such a lovely time just wandering around the streets of Malacca. I've been up to the St Paul's Hill, Bukit Pool. I can't remember what it's called in Malaysian, but this is such a lovely, lovely place and I feel very calm. It's been a bit hectic for the last few days, so it's really nice having just such a peaceful place to wander around, have a bit of me time and just reset really. I'm gonna have so much footage from this because I'm literally taking photos of everything. It's one of my favorite things to do is just go for a walk and just, yeah, take photos and take videos and it helps me to take it in strangely, especially when I'm on my own. Um, and just a really fun place to take photos. It's so beautiful. It's reminding me a lot of Bruges here, especially walking around on my own because I went to Bruges when I was doing a 10 day solo trip just before uni in like 2019. And it's, yeah, lots of little canals and stuff and this river and the shops alongside it and all the flowers just really remind me of that. You can see the colonial influence here more than anywhere else in Malaysia, like churches like this and lots of shutters on the windows feels very European which is quite strange given that we're in Asia um, but yeah I guess that's the nature of colonialism. clouds. into coloring, eh? Yeah. Ah, what the color? Yeah. Uh, UK. Our last night in Malacca, and we're back to the same restaurant again. It's too good. It's too good. Would recommend. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of our time in Malaysia. I really, really loved these 10 days. It felt like so much longer and I would definitely go back there in the future. I feel like we covered everything quite extensively. So if you have 10 days, this would be a great itinerary to follow, I would say. Um, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.